Dr not. Hillary, the question's uh, getting much more serious about testing. And NHS providers saying now there are not enough tests to test NHS staff. And they are starting to have to self-isolate for two weeks. I mean, I re this reminds me of the beginning of the lockdown back in March, where there weren't enough tests. NHS staff then have to take two weeks off work, which leaves the NHS under more pressure just at the time That's right. where things are starting to get worse. This is a catastrophe, isn't it? The British Medical Association are warning about a triple whammy uh, coming this winter. So, first of all, the coronavirus itself. Uh, secondly, seasonal uh, infections on top of that. And thirdly, uh, an increasing backlog of important cases that need to be seen. People needing operations, people who need uh, diagnosis and treatment for cancer, people with heart disease. So when you have your NHS workforce mm. who can't get tests and are self-isolating for 14 days, waiting for a test, you've got uh, uh, staff that just aren't there to even start to uh, look after the backlog of work <clears throat> and the increased workload that is coming their way. This is very serious. So they're the ones who should be getting the tests. People who don't have symptoms shouldn't be going to those drive-in centres um, and asking for tests. It's for people with symptoms. And we need to get a much stronger handle on the whole test and trace system. But, as I've said before, once the prevalence of the disease becomes uncontrollable, test and trace becomes irrelevant. We have to control it first, and that means social behaviour yeah. uh, amongst society as a whole. Test and trace is only part of the answer. Well, the West Midlands has just introduced its, its own local lockdown again, yep. hasn't it, yep. to Birmingham, try and control Solihull. behaviour. So yep. what will that mean for people in Birmingham and the surrounding area? Well, it means they can't have anybody visit their household at the moment. They can't have people staying in their house, coming to visit them. Um, bars and restaurants, as I understand it, uh, can still open uh, because they're considered COVID-19 safe and secure. They're taking precautions to, to minimise transmission. You see, this is one but of the contradictions, isn't it, which difficult. challenges people's behaviour. Yeah. yeah. Because but... if you feel like you can't go around and visit your grandma, for instance, uh, but people can still go out to the pub... Well, all the data, and there is considerable amounts of data that people are looking at, all the data suggests that it's household transmission which is the majority of the problem. The biggest part of the problem is people being close and intimate mm. uh, in households that is transmitting the virus. It's not so much being out where you've got COVID-19 secure places where there's plenty of hand washing, there's plenty of social distancing. So it is based on evidence and it is based on data and science. And we, we need to accept that the guidelines are there for a reason. Mm. Lots of people texting us, I mean, uh, tweeting us. Um, one it, here, oh, yeah. well, one here, my wife is a healthcare assistant at a, it's a, a northern hospital, I won't say which one. Hasn't had a test since the start of this pandemic. The emissions have trebled in five days with the virus. Wow. Uh, worrying there, and that reflects the northwest of England. Uh, numbers increasing yeah. now on hospital. Vic admissions. says Preston is the third worst COVID-19 cases in the country, yet they closed their test centres at 3pm yesterday. Mm. This is according to Vic, as they couldn't handle demand. Uh, Vic says, my next door neighbour hasn't been able to obtain a test for four days now. Well, Matthew Not Horn really here tweeted me. Tracing, are we? Matthew Horn, my 80-year-old mum has a high temperature, a new persistent cough can't get a test, but could have phone call with doctor on September the 21st. Primary carer for nearly blind dad. Beyond angry. Never mind reporting people for breaking rules. What about reporting for incompetence? Dr. Imagine Hillary. being in that position. What's allowed to happen is that we don't have enough tests for patients themselves. Can you imagine if we can't understand what we're treating? We don't know what we're treating because we don't have tests? Yes. And people can't find out what's making them ill and, for instance, they can't have the necessary treatment. Colin Butterworth, would, please show disaster. evidence of hospital admissions for COVID. No, you cannot, because there is none. Uh, we've got a graph. Colin, which, we literally uh, just showed you a graph. Hospital admissions. These are not things we're making up. This is real. Hospital admissions are rising. And in certain parts of the country, like Northwest, rising fast. You may choose... This is from NHS England. You may choose to ignore them. You may want to put your head in the sand and your fingers in your ear and, and just say, no, this is not happening. If that makes you feel better, and there are lots of high-profile people out there telling you that what we're looking at on screen now is not happening, if that makes you feel better, fine. 
But that's not going to help us avoid a national lockdown. Do you know, in our hospitals, they will know every single day how many beds are occupied in that hospital, right. what the patients uh, are diagnosed with, uh, and what's going on in a and &E. The data is, you know, unquestionable. But look at also, Hilary, if you look, like I said earlier, at Marseille in France, down near where I was recently, uh, the ICU beds, they're getting run over again. Mm. And we either take this seriously or we don't. The same thing in Spain. Uh, uh, Israel's in lockdown. What uh, do we gain by not taking this seriously? I don't understand the mentality of the COVID idiots who go, no, I'm, I know there's a chart there. It's obviously fake. This is not happening. What do you gain? What do we as a country gain by that mentality? Just take it seriously. Mm. Um, Dr Henry, thanks very much indeed.